Hello everyone, my name is Ninoa and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Part 13.2 and today we are going to continue our tour of the city-states last time was Gridania, this time we are going to head to Ulda to fulfill side quests, class quests and at the end of the video there's going to be something a bit different in the form of our very first optional dungeon. Well, I say optional. It really only is optional with respect to the MSQ. The MSQ will not take you there at all, but if you want to access things such as housing or the hunt, then it is not that optional at all. But I'll talk more about that when we go there. Anyways, we are now at the inn in Gridania, so I propose we first travel straight to Ulda. And without further ado, let's go! And since we've already traveled a few times there now, I'm going to spare you all the traveling between cities and heading straight to the Miners Guild, which is going to be our first stop. Just notice that there is a couple of uh, materia to be extracted. Level 15, getting in deep. Adalberta would like you to meet a prominent member of the mining community. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit sledgehammer, and a choice between a cotton shepherd's tunic, body gear, level 15, all classes, a cotton shepherd's slops, Leg gear, all classes, level 15. Good skin wrist guards, hand gear, all classes, level 16. Hard leather espadrilles, all classes, level 15. Or Alagan bronze pieces. Ninua, I've been searching high and low for you. You have a visitor and no ordinary one at that. I speak of Deep Canyon, the vice foreman of Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. It seems word of your sizable hall of obsidian has reached his ears, and now he wishes to meet with you. I can only speculate as to his intentions, I'm afraid. We haven't spoken much of late. Truth be told, I've scarcely seen him. You'd never know it, but we used to be close. Anyway, I suggest you go and see the man. Find out what he wants of you. He's waiting by the entrance. You must be Ninoa Uzume. I have been waiting for you. I'm Deep Canyon, this foreman of the concern. I must say you not what I was expecting. I was sure Adalberta's newest protégé would be an Alamigan, like every other miner this place produces these days. But I'll wager you from even farther afield, and that you are an adventurer. <laughs> no offense, but in these parts, Adventurers are known to being fickle buggers who break pledges like the rest of us break bread. Just be told I've always wondered whether you lot are actually good for Ulda. But it seems you're not like the others. It takes more than a jobbing miner to deliver on an order from the concern. Have a mind to assign you work, real work. But before I do, I'm obliged to test you. I want you to procure 10 ounces of cinnabar for me. Do this and we'll talk about more lucrative undertakings. Of course, a bit of cinnabar shouldn't pose much trouble for the guild's rising star. It is but a formality. And speaking of formalities, be sure to tell the guildmaster about your little test. She's the one in charge around here, after all. I won't have it said that I'm undermining 
her authority. A test from Deep Canyon, you say? I thought as much. In case you don't know, cinnabars is the mineral used to make quicksilver. It is found in certain types of rock and you invariably need a sledgehammer to get at it. Now, I don't mean to dampen your spirits, but contrary to what you are told, cinnabar isn't easy to find. In fact, it is known to elude even experienced miners. And here you are, tasked with procuring 10 ounces of the stuff. Safe to say, this test is no mere formality. Hmm. I may not be able to help you dig, but I can point you in the right direction. Search just outside the Sunrise Gate. The rocky outcrops thereabouts are known to yield cinnabar. Ten ounces may sound like nothing, but take it from me. You'll have to work for everyone. This is a big task, Ninoa, but I believe you are equal to it. As a matter of fact, I won't have to head back to gather it because I already have enough of it on me. And remember, I showed you already where to find cinnabar because it is indeed um, a material that is very useful for alchemists throughout a realm reborn. And that is found here at Horizon's Edge, just in front of Horizon's the outpost in Western Thunderland. And remember, this is also exactly where you find the mocha grass that you then use to make hempen as a weaver. So I'm not going to return, I'm going to go straight to Deep Canyon and hand over the cinnabar. I want 10 ounces of cinnabar and not one less. Oh, and make it quick. I've got other commissions that I want sing too. I can hardly make it quicker than that. Well, well, the full amount. Congratulations, Ninua, you've passed the test. Seems you've got even more potential than I'd been le led to believe. This guild's no place for a lass of your talents. I'd make you my personal assistant, but sadly for you, the position is not open to adventurers. Why? Because the concern only employs those whose roots are firmly planted in Ulda. Our nation owes much of its prosperity to the mining trade, but more and more we see outsiders growing fat of the knowledge of our forebears. Oh, I know full well that there are decent foreigners out there who give as much as they get, yourself for one, but ultimately what belongs to Ulda should stay in Ulda's hands. Of course, the current guildmaster doesn't share our way of thinking, which is something I dare say we'll need to see about correcting before long. Might be as business is good, but it is better to be short-handed than to watch outsiders make off with our wealth. But we were talking about you, Ninoa. You've proven yourself capable and the concern will have more work to, for you in the coming days. Depend on it. Before I go, here is some free advice from me. Pay more attention to your gear. What you wear and wield affects how well you work. Even a decent pair of gloves can make a world of difference. Take my word for it. These things cost money, it is true, but what's the price of a pair of gloves compared to the untold wealth that lies out there, waiting to be dug up? Bugger all, that's what. And on that note, I'll be off. I don't doubt we'll meet again soon, assuming you stick with the trade long enough, that is. Yeah, I wonder what he is up to, because that was kind of a veil um, threat to Adabata. Hmm. Well, we'll know more in the next episode of the Miner's Guild class quests. For now, I'm going to clear this little quest here with bitter snow because it kind of buggers me the way it's here all the time. Level 2. Decisions, decisions. Bitter snow's eyes are those of a man in love, wrought with worry and doubt. 
he appears to be waiting for someone who has yet to arrive. What could be keeping her? My beloved Yellow Moon and I promised to meet at this very spot, but two bears have passed and I've nary a word from her. God, I hope she's alright. As much as I wish to go off and find her, and simply cannot, but if she were to come in my absence, please, would you search for her in my stead? It's possible she is somewhere near the Weaver's Guild. She always enjoyed watching the... By the God, so you... Do you think she's left me for someone more dapper? I try not to look a bumpkin, but I've no mind for fashion. Oh. So to the Weaver Guild we go. And we are going to meet our friend Yellow Moon for the first time, but not the last. By record, Biku, just look at me. This hair, this outfit, they don't match at all. I look atrocious. What was I thinking? Oh, I can't let Peter Snow see me like this. Maybe th that last tunic was best after all. Or no, perhaps a blue. Hmm? Peter Snow is waiting for me. But I haven't anything to wear. And the rewards are 82 points of experience, 111 gil and a lavender. And I talked about lavender a bit in the last video because we can gather it around Ben Branch Meadows as a botanist. And since we are at the Weaver's Guild, let's grab the quest. Level 10, Alternative Applications. Redolent Rose appears better and in need of assistance. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gill, 250 lightning shards, 200 wind shards, a copper needle, and a choice between an amateur's headgear or classes level 10, an amateur's quota body gear or classes level 9, Amateurs smithing gloves, hand gear or classes level 10, or two elegant bronze pieces for a total of 200 gil. Ah, Ninua, you'll do. Make me a dozen bolts of undyed hempen cloth as fast as you can. Note the palpable sense of urgency. Time is of the essence, my girl. All right, no explication given, short and sweet, just as well. Some more Mataya to extract. And just as I did in Gridania, remember, for the level 10 class quests, I am going to craft using Quick Synthesis, because we don't need to craft high Q items and it's a big quantity so here it makes sense to use that so first you need to craft the spindles of hemp and yarn 12 time and then use them to create the undyed hemp and cloth 12 time Just remember here to select use HQ materials if you've had any HQ while you crafted the uh, hemp and yarn.
And remember here, before we can hand over the uh, cloth to Redolent Rose, we have to stack the HQ items with the uh, NQ items. And to do that, we lower their quality and then stack them. We urgently need that cloth, Nino. Praise Nimeya for bringing you here when she did. There wasn't time to explain before, but Sunsilk Tapestries has the honor of supplying the immortal flames. Noble patrons to be sure, but ones whose needs can be rather difficult to predict. On this particular occasion, a detachment of ale-soaked adventurers from the Foreign Brigade thought the Silver Bazaar an appropriate location for a bout of fisticuffs, resulting in a pressing need for bandages. Ordinarily, we would not accept such a large commission at short notice, but the Foreign Brigade is a favorite of Her Grace. It would not do to let the troublemakers suffer, even if they did bring it upon themselves. And so your lovingly woven fabric will soon be wrapped around the cracked heads, gashed knees and split knuckles of said ruffians. Still, your time hasn't been entirely wasted. I dare say you can now weave hemp and cloth in your sleep, which is a handy talent to have given the fabric's many uses. You've made progress, in short. In fact, I do believe you are ready to undertake commissions. I refer to the kind of work doled out by Eustace at a quick sound, of course. It will be a while yet before you can be entrusted with anything bearing the Sunsilk name. But should you continue to improve at the rate you have been, so that glorious day may not be so very far off. Level 15. Practical Needs. Redolent Rose has a special task for you. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit's spinning wheel, and a choice between a hempen doublet vest of crafting, body gear level 12, ash patterns, Foot gear level 15 or an Alagan bronze piece for a value of 100 gil. Good of you to come, Ninua. I happen to have work for you. It is a commission of sorts for one of our regular customers, a gentleman named Wawaruka. To show our appreciation for his continued patronage, I would present him with his choice of bespoke garments. Seek him out on Onyx Lane and offer your services. Oh, and remember, Nina, you are representing me, so acquit yourself accordingly. Talk about pressure. Let's pick up this quest too. Level 1, with open arms. Juliana of the Weaver's Guild finds herself at a troubling loss of manpower. If it is work you seek, the Weaver's Guild welcomes you. Indeed, your timing is impeccable. A soiree is to be held with all of Ulda's elite in assistance. Once the invites went out, the orders came in, and that with a fury. Every lord and lady from Cap Cape Dead Wind to the Cinderfoot is demanding the latest fineries. I need hands and I need them now, yet I cannot spare the time to go off in search of them. Would you care to aid us, friend? I ask no more than you welcome to our doors any willing souls you might find. Come, let us see how you fare. Show me your warmest welcome. So I'm going to use the chat box for this one. Excellent! I dare say I would work for you myself. Now, hurry up, we need those people. So you just have to use the uh, welcome emote on a number of people.
Work at the Weaver's Guild? I'd be lying if I said I weren't interested. To whom might I go to inquire further? The Weavers are recruiting? Finally, my chance to become a famous designer. Well, that's two out of two. Not a bad start. I'm not sure he's the right person to <laughs> ask somehow. Who knows? Weaving work? Take a look at me, friend. I'm a bloody guard and on duty, no less. Move along now. Yeah, I could have predicted that one. So the weavers need help, do they? Sorry friend, I'm all set for coin. I appreciate the offer, but I must refuse. I'm all sums when it comes to stitching and whatnot. Oh well, two out of five it is then. So I'll report back once I return to the Weaver's Guild, but we have to go talk to Wawaruka first. I am Wawaruka. Who's asking? Ah, hells. Big Rose don't need to go troubling himself on my account. All them gloves and scarves were for the guild, not me. I'm something of a quartermaster around here, see, and the lads go through gear faster than a goblin chewing on a chunk of mithril. <laughs> I like that image. But if the big man insists, it would be rude not to accept. Now then, I reckon I could do with a new cotton scarf. I and a pair of cotton shepherd slops and all. Once I've got are on their last legs, see? Been need meaning to get round to replacing them. I suspect you'll be wanting me to come to the guild for a fitting, will you? See you there then. So now we can return and complete both quests. You've returned. Well, how did you fare? Two potential recruits, you say? Welcome news. I only hope their zeal for fashion will show in their efforts for the guild. What we do here may seem all silk and satin, to be sure, but the work within these walls is far from easy. In that, I suppose our trade is not unlike any other. And the rewards are 50 points of experience and 102 gear. But I mostly did it in order to clear the um, the map, to be honest, or starting to clear the map rather. Okay, so now we have to craft those items for Wawaruka, made out of cotton this time. But in the last video, I showed you where you could gather cotton yourself. In the central shroud near Bend Branch Meadows, and for that you need a botanist at least at level 10 equipped with a second hand tool. And as you may have seen from the recipe, I need some hempen cloth for the leg piece, so I'm quickly crafting that as well. Again, this time you don't need to craft them high quality and that's going to be the same for all level 15 class quest I'm going to craft this first cotton yarn regularly to show you the rotation a little bit so I normally use basic touch basic touch standard touch but here I have condition good after the first action. 
So I'm going to use standard touch right away to benefit from the bonus. And here I'm going to use veneration in order to increase my synthesis. Now the reason why you see me here use basic touch, basic touch, standard touch is because we have this inner quiet bonus and you can see it on the screen appearing at time. It's a trait. It used to be an action but it is now a trait. And inner quiet means that you accrue um, bonus with each action you take. So when I'm on a durability 40, the first round of action, I only use three actions in total, so I can only fit one standard touch. And that's why I fit it last to get the biggest bonus possible on it. An important thing to take into account is that when the condition is excellent, you will get a massive bonus if you use a touch action at that moment. But invariably, the next step, the condition is going to be poor and that will reduce the efficiency of your next touch action by 50%. So avoid using them when the condition is poor and try to do something else or even wait if you have to. It's one of the rare moments where observe, which is in the first block on the right of my hotbar, is useful. Although it's a bit of a waste of, um, of CPs, but sometimes you may not have uh, much of a choice otherwise. And now all that remains is to put together the items with the materials I've crafted. So for this particular quest it's really easy because everything is crafted by the weaver. So you don't even have to switch crafters or even if you don't have any other crafter you can, uh, you can get away with it this time. But it won't be always the case. And again, past level 15, you won't find all the items you need to craft with the guild's shopkeeper. Don't trouble yourself too much, eh? Long as the scarf don't chafe and the slaps don't sag, I'll be more than happy. Oh, if only all customers were like him. A cotton scarf and a pair of cotton shepherd slops. That's all? Well, let's not keep the customer waiting. All right then, you know, your garments are ready, good sir. Allow me to help you into them. Core, cool. these are nice, bloody nice. I've never had such fine garments before. You're a weaver and a half, you are, Ninua. Big Rose always did know how to train them. You are too kind, sir. Pardon me for saying so, sir, but I must confess that I had rather finer raiments in mind when I extended to you this invitation. Should you desire such, I would be honored to make them for you myself. Haha, <laughs> thanks, Big Rose, but no thanks. I can't see myself in frilly woodsits. And mind where I belong, not some fancy ball. You need a lady on your arm to go to damn things. Ha! That will be the day, eh? Any road, I'd best get on. But knowing how fast the lads go through gloves, I dare say I'll be back before too long. Thanks again for the duds. <laughs> you can lead a chocobo to water. Good work, Lino. Carry on.
Oh, he's so disappointed. It is not the last we'll hear of Wawaruka and um, his needs for clothes. For finer raiments. And two things of note now. The so first is that I could potentially pick up the next class quest from Redolent Rose, but I won't. I will leave that for another time. The second is that I acquired Great Strides, a new ability, and it increases the next touch action by 100% effectively doubling it, and it remains active for three rounds. Okay, next up, I'm heading to the Goldsmiths' Guild. And let's see what serendipity will want from us. Level 10. Throw some rings on it. Serendipity believes you are ready for a new kind of challenge. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gil, 250 wind shards, 200 fire shards, a bronze chase hammer and the usual choice of gear for crafters or two elegant bronze pieces for a value of 200 kill. I'm so sorry sir, please don't... Oh, it's only you, Ninoa. For a moment there, I thought my heart was about to fail me. I thought the angry miner had returned. Gigi wasn't pleased with the ore the miner bought in, you see, and he made this sentiment clear in the only way he knows how. There was mention of the miner's mother and an old goat. <laughs> that reminds me of the Monty Python's The Holy Grail scene with a taunting. <laughs> Please watch this movie if you haven't yet. Never mind all that. I have an urgent task for you. We've just received an order for a prodigious quantity of copper rings and I'd like you to handle it. Now, this is an honest to God's commission, Ninua. You have to satisfy a paying customer, not your kind and lovely guildmaster. But I believe that you can do more than simply satisfy. Now, the customer's waiting, so you'd best get started on those copper rings. When they're ready, come and show them to me, just for good measure. Okay, copper rings. Thankfully, I've made are made of simple copper, so that's going to be an easy one to do. So, same thing as usual: quick synthesis, craft twelve, then craft the twelve copper rings and hand them over. Simple enough. So remember here you just have the one HQ item, lower quality, stack it with low quality and hand over.
So are the rings ready yet? Nee, die, 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 copper rings. Eh, uh, I have seen worse. Oh, Gigi, must you always be so... Wait a minute. Did you just say that you've seen worse? Ninua, that's as good as a compliment coming from him. Yeah, I was expecting a lot worse. I mean, when you consider what a scathing critic he usually is, perhaps the fact he's not saying anything more insulting is a sign he likes it? After all, he's called your previous work utter garbage and an affront to the gods themselves. I have expected him to call these rings abysmal failures. Oh, I probably should take this opportunity to teach you a thing or two about what you made. Copper rings are rings made out of copper. They can be used to make chain and chain mail. You probably already knew all that. Yes, but good try, Serendipity. Anyway, Ninua, I would like you to deliver these rings to the client personally. I would handle it myself, but I believe it's very important that you learn how to deal with customers firsthand. The client is a Sultan Swan named Robert, who should be waiting outside the guild right about now. I told him he could wait inside, but he said he didn't want to distract the goldsmiths at their work. Not that I would mind a distraction like that. Okay, keep your pants on, girl. Also, Robert sounds so out of place in this game, but anyways. Yeah, he, he looks a bit like Zell from FF8, don't you think? Psst, not my type. And let's leave it at that. You're a goldsmith, aren't you? Did Mistress Serendipity send you? Yep. Yes, this shall serve nicely. Keeping the Sultana from harm is perilous business, you see, and the Sultan Swan can never have enough supplies to keep our equipment in serviceable condition. You may inform Serendipity that she can expect full payment soon, and that I send her my fondest regards. Ugh. You can send them yourself. Please keep me out of this. Oh well, that would make her happy, I guess. How did it go, Ninua? What did he say about me? I mean, about your work. Oh! Anyway, seeing how well your very first commission went, I have high hopes for those to come. In fact, why don't you speak with Ostas down at the quicksand and see what work is available for a goldsmith? Yes, I believe you're quite ready to handle commissions independent of my supervision. Take yourself to the Adventurers Guild and try taking on a task or two. In fact, we already have been. But yeah, tradecraft leaves are usually pretty good. Level 15. Objectively speaking, Serendipity appears to be in great distress. Oh. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit's grinding wheel, and the usual choice of pieces for level 15 crafter class quest or an Alagan bronze piece. You would not believe what just happened, Ninua. Chichi touched my... my bottom. I was assisting one of my goldsmiths when he reached out and grabbed it without warning. Then he had the gold to say that my bottom lacks sufficient shape and tone. I feel so violated and insulted. I'm glad Robert wasn't here to... Oh, that reminds me. Robert was back again with another commission. This time, he wants a pair of funk earrings and a brass gorget made. And not by just any goldsmith, mind you. He specifically requested the artisan who crafted the copper rings. That's you, Ninua. He must be really impressed by your work. When the accessories are ready, pray present them for my inspection. I want to ensure that Roberts is completely satisfied. Ah. 
Yeah, but the GG thing is an unexpected development, I have to say. <laughs> I love how this would be a completely shocking and unacceptable development under any other circumstances, and here it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I understand why she doesn't feel good about it. Okay, so Fang earrings and brass gold jets. I just need some leather for those two, interestingly enough. As you can see, there's a hard leather in both recipes and the rest is only crafted by the goldsmiths. Well, the rest is only really brass ingots and you need some bat fangs as well. If you like bat fangs and want to gather them yourself, there is a group of bats in central Thanalan all the way east near the exit to Eastern Sanada, just in case. But it's a bit, of, a bit far away, you're probably better served by buying what you need here. Yes, here note that I could use Waste Knot as an alternative to relying on Master's Band. What it does is that for 4 rounds you spend only 5 durability for each action rather than 10. And I'm going to show you here how that works, so I'm going to use And as you can see now, I'm on 65, 70, 60, 70, so it, for four rounds, it diminishes only by five. But again, I didn't really need to use it here. And for the most part, as long as you keep updated with your gear, you won't need it until you reach the master recipes later on. And I just find master's band more straightforward to fit in a rotation, but... How are the earrings and the gorget coming along? I don't want to keep Robert waiting. Impressive work, Ninua. You clearly have an affinity for brass. The fine touches on these earrings in particular are... Ne, ji, 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 fangs, brass, this presents a dilemma. I should not like these items, but they feel fresh your numerous mistakes when taken together give them an endearing quality i am reminded of serendipity omega bosom and untoned buttocks are did he i have you know that my bosom is quite ample and my bottom is as firm as it can be i simply don't wear clothing that Wait, this has nothing to do with anything, and I refuse to be party to a debate over my own body parts. We were talking about the earrings and the gold trade you made, Ninua. Both gold for brass, which is more useful than you may realize. 
While it isn't the fanciest metal around, it can be made to resemble gold in appearance if shaped and polished well. And despite Gigi's comments, I believe you've done an excellent job. Robert will doubtless agree. Since he requested that you make these items, I suppose you should be the one to deliver them. <sighs> You'll find him outside, as before. No, but if you want to give them to him, you are welcome to it, serendipity, because honestly, I don't care for him. Good to see you again, Nina. I take it the earrings and the gorget are ready. By the gods, the craftsmanship is exquisite. This isn't gear to be worn, but art to be admired. It is of little wonder that Serendipity was named Guildmaster at such a young age. She's a woman of incomparable talent and a rare beauty besides. What? It was you who crafted these? Well now, this is an unexpected development. I will have to keep my eye on both you and your lovely Guildmaster. My thanks, Nino. Now you can keep both eyes on her, as it happens. Apologies for the misunderstanding, Nino. I'll be sure to request you by name next time. Oh, and do tell your lovely kid master that I look forward to seeing her again. He thought it was my handiwork? I don't know what to say. For a customer to mistake your work for mine speaks to your growth as a goldsmith. At the rate you're improving, I can only imagine what customers will be saying about you years from now. She really is the nicest, warmest uh, guild master around, isn't she? I wish she had better taste, taste in men, though. Alright, and now it is time to head to the Alchemist Guild. The last of the crafters here in Ulda we haven't done the level 10 and 15 class quest for. Level 10. All of your beeswax. It seems m some unexpected matter has killed Master Severian more agitated than usual. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gill, 250 water shards, 200 lightning shards, a bronze alembic, and the usual options for level 10 crafters class quests, including two elegant bronze pieces. I remember your face this time, my most helpful assistant, and it is most fortuitous that I do, for the exam effort I have expended in grooming your budding skills is about to be rewarded. My mewling subordinates have requested that I put aside my personal research for a, but a moment or two and shoulder a portion of the guild's workload, even going so far as to force upon me some other alchemists petty task. What fools to think I am the sort of guildmaster that contributes in such a mundane capacity. If they had wanted an accommodating drudge to head the guild, then they should not have elected me to the post. Gods know there are others about the frontistory who would have been better suited to the leadership position. It is time such as these that I curse my blood ties to the syndicate. I would personally be content to eschew such tedious duties in favor of mine own work. Which of course brings us to this moment. It is with great relief that I entrust this matter of beeswax to you. Twelve lumps of beeswax, to be precise. Yes, I knew you would prove your worth before long. Now to work, to work! In some ways, Severian is my favorite 
of altar guild masters for crafters because of his idiosyncrasies but then again i think they did a really good job to make all crafter guild masters stand out and have very different personalities anyways crafting beeswax requires beehive chips which can be found in the north shroud you can gather them with a botanist at gathering points uh, mature trees level 10 which I showed you um, several episodes ago it wasn't in the last video and you will need 36, 36 beehive chips in total for this particular quest very easy there's just the one recipe to perform 12 time lower quality stack and hand over such bliss that I may, my research might progress unhindered by bothersome requests. Speaking of which, have you created the beeswax as I asked? Hmm, this will never be used for the Sultana's bedchamber candles, but the quality is passable, I suppose. This is indeed a wonderful arrangement. Perhaps I should pass on to you the mantle of Guildmaster in its vexatious entirety. Now, the beeswax you have brought me is, as you must surely realize, the purified form of the substance honey bees use to build their hives. Candles are the most obvious use for this refined material, but beeswax may also be used to enhance leather goods or be mixed with dye to create painting supplies. It is not the most difficult material to create, though keeping the quality consistent for such a large batch speaks well of your attention to detail. I had thought to be content with not more than a convenient lackey at hand, but mayhap with further training. Hmm. We must somehow supplement your studies, but I am loath to be parted from my workbench. Thankfully, I am aware of the perfect solution to this quandary. Treadcraft leaves. A selection of alchemical odd jobs should be available to you at the Adventurer's Guild. Simply speak with um, the fellow at the desk. Ostas, I think it was. In any case, you should be provided with ample opportunity to practice your discipline and even receive payment while doing so. Remember, your improvement is my utmost concern. And I don't think he's kidding either. I think he really means that. In his own way, of course, but... Still. Level 15. For fair love. Guildmaster Severian appears to be losing the battle against Exhaustion. The rewards are... 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit's mortar, and the usual choice for level 15 crafters class quests. Then mix uh, two volatile... What? Oh, it's you. H have you not yet learned to concoct potions in your sleep? Admittedly, the results are not always what one dreamed they would be. Oh, I see what you did there. Now, might I deduce from your unrequested presence that you deem your skills sufficiently sharpened and seek further instruction? Or do you simply derive some perverted sense of enjoyment from my irritable reaction? Whichever the case may be, alchemy is certainly a discipline for the curious and the curious of nature. Allow me then to assign you another my duty another task. This time I require you to create one potion of intelligence and one potion of dexterity. I am at a critical juncture in my research, 
so I shall dispense with any lengthy explanations. Surely you need not have me list every eye of mutant fang of bat you need at this point of your education? Well, he's kind of right since we have the uh, crafting lug to help us out. But these two recipes require a bit more diverse material. So for the potion of intelligence, rock salt, which you gather as a miner in central Sanalan, I showed that to you in an earlier video with site content in Ulda. I believe beastkin blood is a drop from bats and red lump trap leaves are obtained also as drops from the rosalettes, which we find in the central shroud source of Ben Branch Meadows. For the potion of dexterity, it is simpler, rock salt and bat fung. Again, bat fung is a drop from bats. It's pretty easy. In case you don't have any at that point and you don't want to spend money on it, you can go to central Sanalan, all the way east, uh, near to the exit to, the, to eastern Sanalan, and you will find a group of bats there. Are the potions concocted and bottled? I shall feel no questions or queries until it is done. Hmm, considering the lack of guidance on my part, you have done tolerably well. As you have discovered, the main catalyst of a potion of intelligence is the primal essence of life, such as that found in the blood of beast skin girls and wolves and the like. The effect is diminished should the blood be allowed to clot, but you seem to have avoided that novice mistake. Potions of dexterity, on the other hand, make use of finely ground bat fangs. The practice of using the powdered form of fang, horn or tusk in the creation of alchemical mixtures is an eastern technique that I am glad to see you have willingly adopted. Either of these concoctions are, is beyond the skill of most neophyte alchemists. It comes as something of a surprise that my sporadic bouts of instruction are proving so effective. In fact, in celebration of your achievement, it is only fitting that you deliver these triumphs to the guild customer in person. I shall regretfully remain behind and sconced in my work. Emphasis on regretfully. Your delivery will take you to the Coliseum, where you should seek a lady by the name of... Uh, what was her name? Ah yes, Ardara, and probably return to me once your task is complete. Yeah, I'm sure Severian is devastated at the thought of not going to the... Um, to do the delivery himself. Level 2, a luxury long lost. Halloween has need of an adventurer to help him test a revolutionary new medicine. Yes, yes, yes! At last my work is complete! Mark my words, this formula will revolutionize alchemy as we know it. With just a sip of this tonic, even raging fevers will be instantly extinguished. But I must needs test it, adventurer. While I produce more, I bid you take this batch to Pearl Lane, to a man there named Landabout. He is trusted by the other refugees. Persuade this Landerbert to take my tonic and give it to his people. I require nothing in exchange. After all, if it is truly effective, it will be a tremendous boon to the advancement of the alchemic arts and uh, mankind at large. That's, uh, that's a lofty goal. 
But yeah, mostly it would make him very rich, as anyone in the pharmaceutical industry would know. Alright, the Pearl Lane is just behind the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, so I'll go there first to talk to Landabout. Eh? Medicine for the sick? An earthly smelling medicine created by budding alchemist Alewin Alda. Ha! We're not fools, lass. We know full well what that bastard Alewin is up to. Oh. But we'll accept his medicine nonetheless. Look at us. Beggars can be choosers. Might be as it's a mere experiment to him, but to us it's a matter of life and death. If we've got to choose between this bastard's swill and nothing at all, is it really a choice? And the rewards are 82 points of experience, 111 gil and win shards. And that was a sobering thought. And the uh, Landabout has another quest for us, but I'll look into that. When I return to do the uh, Disciples of War and Magic classes here in Ulda. So now I'm heading to the Gladiators Guild to continue the Alchemist's class quest. Oh, are you from the Alchemist's Guild? I thought my order would never arrive. You do have the potions, don't you? Uh, are these the ones I asked for? I don't know, I just... I thought the vials would be more ornate. Well, I must do something to pretty them up before I present them to France's affair. I suppose I should be glad it was you in charge of my request and not the guild master. Okay, but why would you say that? I mean, one hears stories about the head of the alchemist's guild. To be honest, I was half expecting the potions to hold some foul liquid, if they held anything at all. They say Savoyan has powerful connections and more guild than he can count, but all he does is west away at his workbench, performing experiments. What kind of research could possibly be so important that he would spend every moment chained to his alchemical devices? Maybe because he is passionate about his craft? But listen to me, gossiping away when I have gifts to prepare. I do hope my beloved France will be impressed. <sighs> Sometimes people are just... Needlessly judgmental, if you see what I mean. I mean, what does he do to her whatever time he spends at his workbench? At least we know it's not for money. Wakey, wakey! Eh, oh, my loyal assistant! The task is done! I'm sure I made not the slightest mention of any task. But now that you mention it, I do seem to recall dropping some niggling irritation into your capable hands. And what then has transpired? I see. More concerned with the vessel than the contents, was she? <laughs> I don't expect much more from those who are not intimately acquainted with alchemy's true beauty. Of course, I'm finding that I can no longer count you among that rabble. Should you continue down this path of mastery, the day might come when you too might join me in the quest for alchemy's ultimate... <gasps> Wha yes. Oh yes, I almost forgot the matter of payment. Now we both best be returning to our work. Go get some sleep, please. So we are going to let him rest. <laughs> Hopefully he will, eventually.
All right, and we have now completed all the class quests I wanted to do at this juncture here in Ulda. So we are heading out into Sanalan. So what I'm going to do now, just as I did in the Shroud around Gridania in the last video, is show you some of the items that are going to be key for crafting around level 15 to 20 roughly, which can be found here in this area. So for that, we are first heading to Eastern Sanalan. Then also we will do a couple of side quests that I want to complete. And finally, we will have that optional dungeon to look into. But first off, we're heading for Eastern Salan. I'll see you all when we get there. Okay, we are not heading for Camp Drybone just yet, but rather for the Drybone Plain at large. There is something that can be farmed all around this area, which I have already mentioned in passing the first time we came here, but I thought it made sense to return to it because there are a couple of materials which are not only going to be ubiquitous in your crafting, but can also be a steady source of income at this early stage if you sell them on the market. And one of these materials is one of the drops from the Miotragus nannies and billies, which you'll find across the plain of Drybone. So although it's going to take me a few attempts before they start dropping, Here I will get an Algot Horn, which are fairly niche items, but they will be pretty useful around level 30, in particular for an alchemist recipe that is then used in recipes by other crafters. So it's good to have a few of those on hand. They also drop Algod Chucks, which are a food item, which is very niche. But what really interests us are those Algod Skins. And thankfully, while it took me a bit of time to get a drop of those, they tend to drop in high numbers at a time. Which makes farming them more convenient. But the reason why I insist on Algod Skins is, well, on one hand, they are very useful in crafting from level 17 up to uh, level 30. So you're going to use them for quite a long time in your crafting journey, at least throughout a Ram Reborn. But on top of that, the tanned version of the Alcott skin which is logically enough ad gold leather, sells extremely well on the market. So it's a very good source of early income if you have retainers. If you don't have them, don't bother with that. Just get what you need for your crafting and done with it but if you do have retainers then it is absolutely worth getting those Algod skins. Skins themselves actually sell for a reasonable price but 
Tanning the skin takes so little time with your crafter that I think it's absolutely worth the effort. You don't even have to tan them to high quality for them to sell well. But on average, I would say the price for a tanned skin, depending on the server, your experience may vary, but typically they are going to be around four, five hundred kill per piece. And high quality hard gold leather can potentially sell for a lot more than that. Sometimes they can sell for up to 1000 gil per piece. That kind of gil adds up very quickly because Again, people are always needing them for crafting, so they are very much in high demand. And because you have to gather them uh, through hunting, well, through coming to Eastern Sunalan and fighting these animals, and sometimes they don't drop anything, so you have to have a bit of patience, people don't necessarily want to bother with that so they would rather buy them on the markets and so there is always customers for that type of goods obviously there are you know a lot of gear that you can sell for in excess of 10,000 gil per piece but they won't sell as reliably and now I'm going to show you the other half of the equation because, again, in order to tan uh, Algot skins, you need what I've just gathered here, which is called Alumen. You need a miner at level 15 or more in order to gather them. And so, in order to craft an Algot leather, you need one Algot skin and one pinch of element. And I'm probably not going to gather more than that right now, simply because here you can see the remaining two gathering points. I just wanted to show you where to find it. Um, but I'm going to come back off recording to uh, do my own farming. Instead, we are going to head to Camp Drybone, where we have a side quest waiting for us. And the side quest in question will allow us to unlock level 15 leaf quests in the area. Level 15. Leaves of Camp Drybone. Poponagu, the local leaf quest representative in Camp Drybone, is seeking an adventurer to undertake guild leaves. The rewards are 1440 points of experience and 239 gil. Good morning to you, adventurer. I am Poponaku, representative of the Adventurer's Guild. I have a number of fine guild leaves in my possession, which I will gladly allow you to undertake, if you prove yourself sufficiently capable, that is. You see, protocol dictates that I administer a trial guild leave. Until you complete it, I can grant you no more. How about this task? Review the details and tell me if you are up to the challenge. Level 15 the low one guild leave. Despite the fact Sultanate law clearly forbids any and all business dealings with beast tribes deemed hostile, a goblin merchant has chosen to ignore the law and peddle his wares to the Almajar. The brass blades cannot allow this and seek adventurers to locate the merchant and bid him seize. He is, however, by no means to be hurt. Goblins are considered harmless and have been granted leave to conduct commerce within the city-state, so we ask that adventurers simply lead him away from Amalja lands towards central Thunderland. 
Very good. You need merely beckon to the gullible goblin, Gotrix Silverpix, to help lead him to his destination. And as you may have guessed, this is basically the same quest as the one we had to unlock the guild leaves in the East Shroud. So you have to accompany someone from point A to point B while protecting them from potential enemies. I'm going to initiate a quest. Remember to put the beacon emote on your hotbar if necessary. And remember, don't go too far from your companion and just make sure to keep an eye on possible threats and you'll be good. And this puzzle is a good example of how, while certain enemies are visible on the map right away, some of them appear when you pass at a level or even appear in your back and attack the person you are supposed to escort. So it's a good idea to keep an eye on the minimap to avoid nasty surprises. Of course, at level 15, it's still going to be pretty easy to handle. Later on, well, it might get a bit trickier if you don't pay attention. Many, many thanks, Uplander, but Gotrix will be back. <laughs> no, Gotrix! As is a desert heat wasn't too much for you. Here is your reward. See that you don't spend it all at the pub. And with that, you have fulfilled the requirements. You are free to partake of my guild leave at will. There is always work to be done here in Calm Dry Bone. Whatever you, your talents, I have no doubt that you will find someone in need and willing to pay. So that's now all the guild leaves at level 15 available. And we are now done with what I wanted to show you here in Eastern Sutherland. So we are going to return sorry, to Central Sutherland, where we have another side quest waiting for us. Alright, so we are going to head back to the bonfire. And here I forgot that my Lancer was only level 22, which means I can still aggro level 13 enemies. But yes, as I was saying, we are going to return to the bonfire to 
visit our friends Mutamix and Co. Because there was this quest you may remember from the first time I visited them, which required a crafter at level 19 to unlock. And unfortunately back then I didn't have that, but now I do. So I can finally complete that quest, which is going to be pretty important, although technically you could never do it and complete the game. But it's going to be very convenient if you have that ability. And I am talking about melding Mataya, of course. So you can ask NPCs in the game or other players, but it will be a lot more convenient to be able to do it yourself. Not to mention cheaper, but mostly convenient. I'm going to ignore for now the quest held by Kokosamo. I will return to him later. I need to switch now to whatever crafter I have, which is level 19 or above, and talk to Phobas. And talk to Phmobas. Level 19, Waking the Spirit. Fmobas wishes to teach you how to meld materia. The rewards are 1680 points of experience and the materia melding ability. Why, hello there! I see you are a disciple of the hand, like me. Mayhaps you are interested in learning how to meld materia to gear? If so, it would be my pleasure to teach you. Ready to begin? Good. Now then, there's one thing to keep in mind when melding. Materia slots. Arms and armor each have a certain number of these slots, and this determines how many pieces of materia they can host. Normally, an item cannot host more pieces of materia than it has slots. However, as with most other things in life, there are certain exceptions. But this sort of knowledge is for later down the road. After you've become more experienced, you may want to broach the subject matter with Master Mutamix. Now off you go, and happy melding! Well, that was short and sweet. You can now meld materia to items. Gear can be enhanced significantly by affixing materia to the slots available on most weapons, tools and armor. The number of slots available in a piece of gear can be confirmed by viewing its help text. To affix materia to an item, highlight a piece of gear and select meld from the subcommands. Next, select the materia which you wish to affix. Similarly, should you wish to remove materia, you may do so by highlighting it and selecting remove materia. So I'm quickly going to show you how that works. First I'm going to repair the ash patterns because I noticed that the condition was running pretty low. So on the subcommand menu you will find the meld command which wasn't there before. On the left side of the panel that opens you have all the gear that you can potentially meld materia to with a number of slots available and on the right side the materia you have in your inventory which you can choose from i selected a materia related to crafting to meld into the ash patterns and as you saw that's the very quick operation There are going to be more subtleties related to melding, uh, but at this early stage, that's that's enough. That's all you need to know right now. Okay, and we are almost done with everything I wanted to show you here in Salan for the moment. Just two more things, and both are to be found in Western Salan, so that's where we are heading. And since we already know the way, I'll see you directly there.
And here we are in Western Sonalan, close to Horizon. Now you recognize this area where we have gathered a lot already, but I'm going to go further towards the entrance of Copperbell Mines. Because in this little secluded area, as you can see, we have gathering points, which are entirely dedicated to a single item. Well, two, because there are elemental shards as usual, but ignoring those. The item is iron ore, and iron ore is going to dominate a lot <laughs> of your crafting throughout a realm reborn. So iron itself is going to be the main metal for a good 10 levels until we move on to steel, but crafting steel requires iron ore as well. And then when you think you can finally move on, it turns out that cobalt, which dominates uh, metal crafting between level 40 and 50, requires iron ore as well. So basically you will need iron ore on in large quantities from level 15 all the way to the end of a realm reborn as crafters. Well, blacksmiths and armorers. So that's going to be the last of the four gathering points. Ooh. And a challenge completed. Nice. Okay, and I'm not going to subject you to all the iron farming I'm going to do. So <laughs> I'm leaving it for now. But obviously I'll be back off screen to spend a lot of time near the entrance of Copperbell Mines. What we are going to do now, however, is going for something a little bit more exciting than gathering irons for hours, namely unlocking a new dungeon. And for that we need to head to Vesper Bay, where I'll see you in a few moments. And now in Vesper Bay I'm looking for a fellow called Nedric Ironheart. Here we are. Level 20, Hallo Halatali. Nedric of the Science of the Seventh Stone has some useful information he wishes to share. The rewards are 1740 points of experience, 258 gil, and a choice between iron gauntlets, hand gear, or level 20 for tanks, goatskin arm guards, hand gear, disciples of war, level 20. Or cotton dress gloves, hand gear or classes, level 21. Or four elegant bronze pieces for a value of 400 gil. Hail there, adventurer! I'm Nedric Ironheart, an explorer by trade and a scion by allegiance. And you, my friend, look to me an adventurer in need of a challenge. I happen to know just a place that will offer it to you. Tucked away in a corner of eastern Sunderland lies Halatali. It is there that you will find all the excitement you crave. The place boasts a storied history. It was built some 100 years past as a training ground for gladiators. The calamity led ruin to it though, as it did to most things. Now Halatali is a shadow of its former self. But in the dark of that shadow lurk wild beasts, both, both bloodthirsty and beyond count. For one such as yourself, I dare say, there is no place finer than Halatali to test your skill and refine your technique. Indeed, I've taken the liberty of passing your name along to the flames who oversee the place. Should you visit, speak with one Fafajoni near the entryway. I love that he just knew that we were going to do it. Uh, <laughs> he presumed, but he presumed well. 
So, Harat Ali is the first of many optional dungeons found in A Realm Reborn, but optional is kind of a relative term. With respect to the MSQ, you never have to touch Halat Ali in your life. However, remember that thing called Grand Companies? Well, if you want to progress through the ranks of Grand Companies, you will have to do Halat Ali, and sooner rather than later, and I will explain to you why when we get in there. So basically, if you are interested in housing, if you are interested in interested in the hunt, if you are interested in doing relic weapons, for all of that, you will need to level up your grand company ranks, and therefore, you will need to go through Halatali. So, as mentioned by Nedric, Halatali is found in Eastern Sunderland. So, I'm going to spare you all the traveling there, and I will see you directly when we arrive. And we are welcomed by heavy rain. How nice! So, as you can see from the green check mark on the map, and now the minimap, the entrance to Halatali lies just southeast of the entrance from central Sunderland. A bit out of the way. We are always on the lookout for new talent, what with the old talent getting mauled and killed proper training at a place such as this now. That helps. So it's probably recruiting gladiators. If it is the halls of Halatali you seek, you need seek no further. Permit me to tell you something of this place. The name comes from an ancient town, Halatali meaning the land of many shadows. It was here that our distant ancestors first settled and... Bah! We have not come all this way for a lesson in history. Actually, I wouldn't mind. Shh, listen. Do you not hear the howls and growls? Do you not feel how they shake the very earth beneath you? Those sounds are the work of no wind, my friend, nor that rumbling the doing of any shadows. Those are the calls of Halatali, for now the beasts once kept for the Coliseum lurk here. And these are no gentle beasts broken by the hand of man. No. There are those within that even the might of the immortal flames cannot tame. From the look of you, you must be Ninua. Aye, I received word from Nedric that you might be along. By his recommendation, I grant you leave to enter freely. I only pray you are able to find your way out. Charming! Alright, so now let's have a look here in order to join the queue to do Halatali with other players. Note that there is no option to do it with duty support, as is the case for all optional dungeons in A Realm Reborn. Now let's read up a little bit on it before we head in. Originally a holy place for the first Alafel that arrived in Eorzea, the twisting labyrinths of natural caverns which win through this massive mesa was transformed by the gladiators' guild into a series of training pits, animal pens and holding cells to accommodate the ever-growing popularity of Uldas Coliseum. After the calamity, however, the location was abandoned. Those remaining in the pens left for dead. Not all of them, however, made that fate, and now the tunnels are rife with those who survived, as well as the tormented spirits of those who did not. Is it me, or did it just get a bit chilly all of a sudden? Anyways, regardless, we are still heading in, and I'll see you as soon as the queue pops. which took about five minutes of waiting, which is fairly reasonable. Now, Halatali, because it is an optional dungeon and does not have duty support, 
wasn't revised during End Walker, unlike the dungeons we've seen until now. So, you will see there are a lot of idiosyncrasies in those dungeons, which personally, for the most part, I find interesting, but your mileage may vary, I guess. But Halatali is a pretty fast-paced dungeon, so I think most people actually quite enjoy this one. And if you look at the Heckler Imp, you will see that it has a target above its name. And that target is not related to my hunting log as an archer, but to my hunting log as a member of the Grand Company. We need to defeat these targets in Halatali in order to progress the hunting log related to the Grand Companies and completing Grand Company hunting logs is necessary in order to progress from a certain point onwards. So now you understand why you need to visit this dungeon even though it is technically optional. But like I said, this dungeon runs very quickly. We are already at the first boss. And the beginning of the fight is very straightforward. The only thing that you should notice is that big fire in the middle of the room. And it's going to play a role in the main mechanics of this battle. So for now it's incredibly boring. And the team is incredibly efficient, which means that we are not going to see a lot of the main mechanics, but here it is. So, you will see those little fires heading towards the main fire in the center of the room. And if you do not deal with them and they reach that main fire, this happens. There is an AoE which deals damage to everybody. Now because we are so quick, we are done with the boss before the end of those chains of fire because the last fire is called a Noxious and deals a lot more damage if it hits the center of the room. Still nothing that your healer should not be able to deal with. So you'll see a lot of groups just ignore this mechanic altogether. In the second area, you need to locate and activate five chain winches in order to reach the second boss. Now every time you activate a chain winch, you are going to see an one of a number of options. Here we got three lightning sprites that you need to fight. Sometimes a bomb will appear, which you can just ignore. It will stay where it is and explode after a while. So you can just leave it and run away. And from time to time you will get a treasure chest. Which obviously you can just open and gather whatever is in it. Okay, completed the size Mantis for the Twinada Grand Company hunting log. Still have the Colosseum Python left to do. And here you saw we jumped from the bridge, which wasn't necessarily that much time saving because what happens here is that as a result we missed one of the chain winches and we're going to have to go back a little bit. So in this second area, yes, there are shortcuts, but they're not really helpful. Yeah, handling, handling <laughs> three enemies here with a sink down as a DPS, not really a good idea. But 
the Reaper was right to head back again because we were missing one of the chain winches. So as you saw, it triggered a bomb, so we just all ran away and left it as is. It's not going to, um, to follow you or uh, attack you or anything. Its only purpose in existence is to explode. So we got an extra pair of ethereal brass ear cuffs in our loot. Another Grand Company hunting log entry completed. Now let's meet the second boss. And it is a thunder-based boss standing in water. What could possibly go wrong? So you want to grab the aggro and take it near to the steps. And after a little while, it's going to run to the center, it will become invulnerable, so don't follow it, and stay out of the water, because as you can see, those in the water will be afflicted with electrocution, which is going to increase thunder-based damage. We are going to have to defeat a total of 6 lightning sprites before the water returns to its natural state and the boss can be attacked again. And we're going to rinse and repeat another time. And after the second time, you can return safely into the water and just finish the battle. Grab the two coffers and head through the ethereal flow. This area before the last boss is incredibly short. You can ignore most of the enemies in there, you just have to grab that Ruby's beak and the couple of gas bombs and the other Ruby's beak here. There are other enemies that can appear in the central area, but you can ignore that entirely. It just gives you access to an extra treasure. Here, open the door and the last bus is found behind it at the top of the stairs. We also got our little achievement for visiting all of Halatali. And obviously they started the fight without me. <laughs> but it's okay because the um, mechanics repeat so I can still show them to you. So after just a few hits, the boss will become invulnerable and typically you will tank it at the other end of the area. Here, at this point near the entrance, fire sprites will appear one after the other and you have to defeat them. DPS should ignore the boss at this point. Then turn your attention to the little fires, Diamantus, and defeat them. Once it's done, return to the boss, it becomes invulnerable again, and rinse and repeat. And just as with the second boss, the mechanic repeats twice. After that, it is a straightforward fight until the end. And voila! Halatali, first optional dungeon complete. Now Halatali 
goes fast anyways, but given the level of the people with me, it went even faster. So don't be surprised if it takes you a little bit more time. I'm going to give a recommendation here. I'm going to give it to the healer because they got some extra work at one point. Nothing that it couldn't handle though. It was well played by everybody here. And I couldn't grab that last item probably because I already had one. And they were being extra nice to me. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> and everybody recommended me, which is sometimes that happens. People just, you know, give recommendations to the new player as a form of encouragement. Or it may be they were all in the same group. So de facto, they could only recommend me. Either way, it was nice. And generally, people are very nice towards new players in instances. Okay, so I brought up the hunting log to check on my ground company hunting log, which reminder is separated from your disciples of war and magic's individual logs which, as you just saw, is giving you, as a form of rewards, seals exclusively, which is pretty nice. So that's something, if you need some extra seals, that's a good thing to do. And I'm going to tackle systematically these targets a little bit later on after we've completed mm, level 25 of the MSQ, roughly. I'll show you where to find them. There are a couple that are a little bit trickier to find. There is one though that I'm going to do right now because it's found very nearby. It's found in the area that we visited with Tancred uh, during the MSQ. And there is one type of enemy in the hunting log that's found there. So I'm going to had uh, hunting some Neotragus along the way. And those targets as are the Amaja javelin there.
And that's yet another Grand Company log entry completed. Alright, and that pretty much is going to be it for this video. Just time for me to return actually to Vesper Bay. See you there. Alright, and I'm just going to take the boat to Limsa Luminsa, since this is going to be the stage for my next video. But for now, it is time to head back to the inn in order to complete this video. Because we're already almost two hours in, so that's going to be enough for one day. Alright, and next time we are going to do more of the same, namely clearing up class quests and side quests available to us, but this time in Limsa Luminsa before resuming the MSQ past level 20. In the meantime, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye bye.